Today's episode is brought to you by NSE Windows. NSC Windows is a Marvin Windows certified installation company and replacement outlet located in Massapequa, Hopog, and Watermill on Long Island, New York. NSC Windows services include professional windows and door installation and replacements. NSC is an official dealer of Marvin and their signature, Elevate, and Ultimate collections, as well as other window and door brands, such as Provia, True Style, and Reed. Make sure to find them in Watermill, Hopog, or Massapequa, and visit www.nscwindows.com for a tour of their virtual watermill showroom or give them a call at 516-500-3550. Here we go. Episode 84 of the Hardline Sports Talk. I'm Michael Merlo. I'm joined, as always, by John Michael Masiri. The first episode of the new year. JM, how are you? I'm great. Looking forward to another great year of podcasting with you, buddy. Yes, very much looking forward to it. First episode of 2023, and it was really got off to a bang. Lots of things happening in the sports world, but it's Wednesday. This will probably be released Friday. We're coming up on the NFL playoffs, super wild card weekend coming up, and we're both super excited. We're going to talk about the games coming up this weekend. We're going to give our predictions for the rest of the NFL playoffs, so I'm pretty pumped for that. Yeah, ready to go. I mean, we have a very interesting slate of games here. A lot of divisional matchups, not so used to that in the playoffs. I mean, what about half the games are divisional matchups. And um, obviously some some odd matchups we weren't going to expect in the beginning of the year, like the Seahawks being in the playoffs. The Jaguars are hosting a playoff game. So <laughs> definitely, definitely going to be interesting. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. There are a couple of close games, and there are a couple of games you may consider – to possibly be blowouts, the spreads will tell you it's going to go that way. But we'll see. There's also some injuries that we're dealing with, which we're going to get to when we talk about these games. Uh, I do want to start. We're going to go in chronological order. So we are going to talk first about the Seahawks and 49ers game. That's coming up Saturday afternoon. Um, I think a lot of people believe that this game is going to be a blowout. And I don't necessarily believe that to be true. Now, the 49ers beat them twice. They be- The first game was a blowout. It was the day that uh, Trey Lance got hurt, and Jimmy G took over for until, what, week 13, week 14. Mm-hmm. They blew him out in that game, and then they played a couple of weeks back, I think week 15, Thursday Night Football is a close game in Seattle. Uh, they only won by eight. Right. I see this game being close. Yeah. So, I mean, it's a, it's a divisional game. Um, we all know the stats about third times around when teams yep. play against each other. It's very hard to beat a team three times. Um, so, yeah, I get it. Um, I could see it being a close game. I do think the Niners are going to pull it out. Um, you know, maybe the box score doesn't reflect the way this game is going to be played. I could see it being a close game and kind of the Niners pulling away at the end. Um, but if I'm a Niners fan, I'm... Um, Obviously, for any playoff game, when your season's on the line, you're nervous, but I'm less nervous than I would be playing any other team in the NFC. Right. And the Seahawks have shown, especially, you know, toward the end of the regular season that, you know, Geno's kind of – I mean, Geno's had a great year, but he wasn't as great as he was in the beginning. Um, You know, they've dealt with some injuries. They just haven't been the same team lately. They did pull out the victory against the Rams in Week 18 to get to the playoffs, obviously needed some help. Uh, But this team will be able to run the ball. I think it's going to be some crappy weather at Levi's Stadium. Uh, Kenneth Walker looked good against the Rams. He's healthy. Uh, This, to me, could be a close game. And I agree with you. I think the 49ers are going to pull this one out, and they're going to win. I don't know. I I think they cover the spread, the Seahawks. But the 49ers, to me, probably have the best roster in the entire NFC. Um, And I do think they put out – they're in a, they're a tricky team. When we give predictions, you know, we're obviously we're going to talk about Brock Purdy and what he can do as a rookie quarterback. That you know, at the end of the day, this is a slightly flawed team because they don't have experience at quarterback. They have you know the last pick in the NFL draft from the year prior, a rookie quarterback. A rookie quarterback has never won the Super Bowl, so I think we went over this. Never got to the Super Bowl or went to the Super Bowl. I forget no. which is true. No, Ben Roethlisberger, I think, got there as a rookie. I don't know if he won though. So it's a tricky, they're a tricky prediction. 
Has a rookie quarterback ever won the Super Bowl? Uh, no team has won a Super Bowl. The rookie starting quarterback, however, in the play, uh, blah, blah, blah. Okay. I don't know. I don't know if Big Ben got there, but, um, let, you know, let's look at this from a couple different ways. Like, obviously, the Seahawks, like we said, like, they haven't beaten the Niners. It's probably going to be a loss for them. They've had a great season. I mean, nobody saw this coming. Um, Geno Smith throwing 30 touchdowns. I, I never thought I'd see that day. Good for him, obviously. Um, Pete Carroll. I think I feel like when we talk about the coach of the year, it's always like, well, is it is it Dayball or is it Sirianni or whoever? I'm very surprised that Pete Carroll's name doesn't get thrown right up there with Brian Dayball. To me, he's number two. Yeah, he he definitely should be considered 100%. Um, the Niners, like I said, they're going to win the game. Now, how far they get? I think they're a great team. I think, obviously, they have a defense that we see not every year. This is a, a, obviously the best defense in the NFL, and it's maybe the best defense we've seen in a couple of years, maybe even since their own defense back in 2019 or whenever that was when they went to the Super Bowl and lost to the Chiefs. I don't think that I've been saying it all year and I'm going to stick by it. I don't think they can get to the promised land with Brock Purdy. Like I I, I think they'll get by with that, um, with that great offensive talent that they have. And obviously I already mentioned the great defense. They have great coaching. I think that those are all wonderful things and it'll get them really far in the playoffs, but I, I, I don't see this team winning a Super Bowl. I just can't, even if they make it to the Super Bowl, I can't see them, playing a team like the Chiefs, the Bills, the Bengals, and and pulling it out. I feel that way about every NFC team. Yeah, There's not an NFC team I feel like can go up against the top three in the AFC. Um, Again, we'll get to that in a little bit. Um, You're 100% right about Pete Carroll, though. I mean, you know, Shanahan totally deserves consideration, too, doing this with three quarterbacks. Um, There's a lot of great candidates for Coach of the Year. Carroll should absolutely be up there 100%. I'm just looking people. at, yeah. Sorry, what? no. So, you no I was just, I was just looking at the line for the game. Nine and a half is that's that is a lot of points. That's a lot of points for a divisional matchup. Yes, the 49ers are better. I completely like you know. Obviously, the 49ers are a better team with Brock Purdy with whoever is playing quarterback. They're a better football team. But a divisional game. This will be the third time the 49ers beat them. Now, this is not going to shock me if this is a close game. And again, you brought up Pete Carroll, a veteran head coach, has been here before. Mm-hmm. is going to scheme differently, I'm sure, than he did in the first game against Brock Purdy. There's more information on Brock Purdy now for them to scheme against him. So, yeah, I- I'm all over the Seahawks this week, um, but the 49ers are going to get the win. All right. They had, just real quick, they had two matchups this year, obviously. Uh, 27-7 week two, they right. played the Seahawks at home. That's where it will be this time again, obviously. And then uh, that Thursday night football game in week 15, they won 21-13. Yeah. It'll be fun. Okay. They've been blowing teams out lately, though, the Niners. They've been going kind of crazy. They're a good football team. They are yeah. definitely a good football team. Okay, let's move over to the next game. I think could be possibly the game of the weekend. The Chargers at the Jaguars. Um, The Jags got a win week 18 against the Tennessee Titans. It was a sketchy win, but they got the job done at home against Joshua Dobbs. Now... A taller task, playing Justin Herbert in his first playoff game. You know how I feel about the Chargers. You know how I feel about Justin Herbert. The Jaguars are going to win this football game. The Jaguars are going to beat this team. You don't know how much I want to stick to my original Super Bowl pick and just tell you that it's going to be Chargers 49ers. I was right from the beginning. I I don't. You don't know how much I want to tell you that, but I can't. I don't think they win this game. I, I really think the Jacksonville Jaguars come out here and beat them in a really close game. I think it could be maybe the best game of the weekend. I'm going to, I'm going to strongly disagree with you on this. Um, I have the chargers winning this game. Now I've been kind of saying over, uh, over the course of the season that the chargers are not, ju- not just not a great team. I mean, when you, when you look at them play, they, they struggle with inconsistency on offense. You know, they, they, sometimes they get out of rhythm and we know how banged up this team has been over the course of the season. But looking at this matchup against the against the Jaguars, Jaguars had a nice season, win the division at nine and eight, hosting a playoff game. I think their their magic season, their magic run stops here. I think that this is just going to come down to 
who's got the better quarterback and who's gotten the more explosive offense. And I think that's the, the chargers. I think both these defenses are about middle of the road. You know, you don't really look at either one and say you're very impressed. Right. Um, I agree. I think it will be a very close game. I know the spread has been bouncing around. It was once a pick them. Now the chargers are favored by two and a half. I, I guess the public is really on the chargers. Um, I think whoever wins this game loses in the second round. I don't think that's a bold statement, but um, right. I think it'll be a really good game. But like I said, I think it's just going to come down to who's got the better quarterback, who's got the more explosive offense, um, the more NFL, uh, you know, explosive offense, professional offense, and that, that's going to be the Chargers. You know, over the last, I, you know, it's close to two months now. The Jaguars have been one of the best teams in football. They're six and one. Um, they played a lot of great games. They played some good teams. They blew the teams out. They were supposed to. They've been playing some really good football. And you give credit to Doug Peterson. You, you give credit to everybody. Uh, Trevor Lawrence has played very well. Um, the Chargers have also played some of their best football down the stretch. Like you said, they've gotten healthier. They they were banged up all season long. And when it looked like this team wasn't going to make the playoffs, they got healthier and they flipped the switch and now they're the five seed. I don't want to go against this Jaguars team, though. I don't want to go against a team that is just playing well at the right time, got healthier. I trust Doug Peterson more than I trust Brandon Staley. Are they um, playing well at the right time? Are they playing that well? Like, I know they... They've they've had a better second half of the year than the first, but that win on on Saturday night was kind of a, a limp to the finish line for them. They didn't play their best football game. Let's go over their last since November twenty seventh. Beat Baltimore twenty eight to twenty seven. That home. was their best game of the year. Right. Now that and the Cowboys game were their two best games of the year. Then week uh, December fourth, week thirteen, they got blown out in Detroit. Lawrence left that game. Uh, he was banged up, but they didn't play well in that game. Then they beat Tennessee 36-22. That could also be one of their best games. Tenhill played in that one. Derrick Henry played in that one. That was at Tennessee. Then at home versus Dallas, they beat them 40-34. Came to the Jets, beat them on a rainy night 19-3. Blew out the Texans in a game that was could have been a letdown game. Was not a letdown game. They blew them out. And then they skated by yes i don't think they played well last saturday at all but they skate by with a victory against tennessee a lot of their best games this season have come down the stretch in the last seven weeks here six seven weeks here that's I, why I'm, I, I looking at all the numbers i think that Vegas is right and we're right by what we're saying that this is going to be a really good game the, the chargers do not blow out teams and they don't get blown out the only time they got blown out all year was actually by the jaguars way early in september right um plus seven point differential for the chargers on the season so they're basically dead even that's how that's how close they play um and if you go look at their schedule you understand where that number comes from i mean every game is settled by three to six points it seems like um yeah, yeah. it's this game to me is probably the one of if not the hardest game to predict just because i feel like we know so little about both of these teams right they're they're both new to the playoffs um they've got two very young quarterbacks especially you know we know herbert's the real deal and i think we're starting to get that lawrence is the real deal also but we also haven't seen him in too many high leverage situations right um you know new coaches for both these teams you know staley's only a year and two years in um, so I, I think there's a lot to, uh, to be discovered about both of these teams. That's why I think it's a very hard game to predict, but I, I don't know. I just got a gut feeling about the chargers. I think that they're, uh, they're going to shine brighter. The bolts. All right, let's, uh, let's move over to Sunday now where we just got the news that Tua Tagovailoa is not going to play in Buffalo. That news just broke. He's not out of concussion protocol, according to coach Mike McDaniel, so it'll either be Skylar Thompson or it'll either be Teddy Bridgewater that get to take on this Buffalo Bills team. I don't think we have to spend too much time on this game. The spread jumped up to about 13 now. Um, this is going to be a blowout. The Dolphins in recent history have gotten blown out in the playoff the last few times they've been here. 
again, you're going to have a backup quarterback. You're going to be going into Buffalo. This is not going to be easy. And I think if Teddy Bridgewater's playing, there's a chance they can, you know, cover a two touchdown spread. But if it's Thompson, I mean, this is going to be, I think Frank the Tank of Barstool said, this is going to be uh, Georgia versus TCU. And I don't think yeah. he's wrong there. Yeah, no, uh, 38 10, something like that. I, th- I think this is going to be a absolute blowout. Um, yeah, you're right. The line jumped. Now it's 13 and a half. It was 10 and a half this morning. Uh, but right before the, the news about Tua, um, the Dolphins, they they literally have limped their way into the playoffs. I mean, you know, eight and three team went down to eight and eight, lost five in a row, um, and then just skated by Joe Flacco and the Jets, which, you know, not not to knock on them. Obviously, they didn't have their starting quarterback, but they don't have their starting quarterback again. So I I I really do believe that this is gonna be really bad. The Bills had a little bit of a rocky road in the middle of their season where we were like, they were sitting at like five and three or whatever the hell they were. And we we weren't sure, you know, the, the AFC East was still a possibility. Maybe we were talking about the Dolphins winning the division. And then they just hit their stride and they haven't looked back. They they look like the Bills that we thought they were gonna be um one of the best if not the best team in football right now so that being said with Skylar Thompson playing who is not an impressive quarterback to put it like lightly <laughs> it's really not good um yeah I, I I think this is just an absolute blowout and I think I think the Bills have the advantage with quarterback uh not receiver actually Dolphins have great receivers with their quarterback their overall offense their defense is better and they have better coaching so that plus home field advantage spells really bad football. Yeah. I think we can move on to the, from this game. Yeah. We can uh, jump over to what I think is going to be the game of Sunday and possibly the game of the week. The New York Giants at the Minnesota Vikings. As a Giant fan, this was the matchup a lot of us had hoped for uh, to go back to Minnesota. The Vikings on Christmas Eve beat the Giants on a 61-yard field goal from Greg Joseph who I didn't think it hit a field goal over 50 yards, but he proved me wrong. Um, I think this is going to be a great game. I, the first game was really entertaining. It was close and it was, you know, high scoring. I think this one has a chance to be a exact replica of that game. I, I think that these two teams are very evenly matched here. Uh, the giants have gotten much healthier on defense the past few weeks. They're getting Xavier McKinney back. Well, they've had Xavier McKinney back. They'll have a Dory Jackson back. I'm pretty sure for this game. They didn't have him last time. Um, I'm just so ecstatic as a Giants fan because I think this team is so well coached and I think they have a chance in this game and I think they're going to win. I think they're going to cover three. I think they're going to win the game. I think Wink Martindale is going to have this defense ready to go. There were a few mistakes in the last game that just shouldn't have happened. And, and Jones is playing his best football of his career. Uh, down the stretch here he's been really really good so I have confidence as a Giants fan um, I think all Giants fans should have confidence really yeah um, I mean I have you guys winning the game I was thinking about this for a little while um, another good matchup we saw the same exact one not a couple weeks ago um, where you guys obviously it was a crazy ending the 61 yard field goal or whatever it was um, I'm gonna stick by my word um, my prediction didn't come true, obviously, that the Vikings were going to win two more games, although it seemed like they did with all those freaking one-point wins that they keep getting. Yeah. Um, I'm going to stick by my word, and I'm going to keep calling them frauds until they make it to the Super Bowl at this point. Um, yeah, they're going to lose. The Vikings are... I've never seen a team with that record, like, look so bad at so many times. To- like, so many times. Like, when you watch that game when they played the Packers... They looked like the Houston Texans, like awful. Like if their offense hits a little skid, it's they get nothing going. Like they can't even that's what makes those great offenses so great is even when they're off, they could still go out and get an ugly 24, 27 points. Mm-hmm. The Vikings are not doing that. Like they're putting right. up 10, 13 points. Like it's a bad offense when they're off. Um and I agree with you. I think the Giants are a better coach team. Um, I think they have a, a better defense, clearly, than the Vikings. And I think this just spells a typical wild card matchup that, you know, and when you look at the records, the the lesser team is going to win. 
Yeah, the the Vikings defense, um, outside of Peterson and and Daniel Hunter, uh, they don't have many guys on this defense that you like. Oh my God, you know we got to make sure you know we don't throw at this guy and make sure there's two heads at this guy all the time. Not many of those guys, and Peterson has had a good season for them, but he's you know not the same player at all. Uh, the Giants, when they played them the last time, everything over the middle was wide open, and that's where the Giants take advantage. I think the Giants are going to you know, – basically, they'll do whatever they want on offense. You know, the, Again, like you said, the, the Vikings defense is not going to stop them here. It's going to be an interesting matchup, though, because I do think the Vikings will be able to score on the Giants. Their offense, at times, yes, looks anemic, but if they get things going, they will be able to. The Giants' pass rush has been great of late. Uh, Zizo Jolari will play in this game. He left the Viking game. He hurt, he hurt his ankle. The giant pass rush is healthy, ready to go. I think the Giants win this game. I don't know what the score is, but I think they win it. And um, I'm looking forward to it. I hope they do the whiteout again. I, I like the white, the way the whiteout looked. Yeah. It's just crazy that they're 13 and four playing a nine and seven team and they only have three points. And the three points is at home because that's a three. That's yeah. a, they're basically some, saying they're even. Yeah. There are some stadiums where you're like, that might be like, like MetLife is probably like a two point stadium. This is a three point stadium in the yeah. dome. It gets really, really loud in there. Uh, they they have great fans, so that's probably three points for being at home, and that's about it. That's how they view it. I'm surprised it hasn't swung to two and a half, honestly. But I, I think I think by the time it opens, it'll be to two and a half. Yeah, I'd say maybe but, two. You think so? Yeah. If the professionals are on the Giants, it will go to two, two and a half. The Sharps. Yeah, the, the Sharps. I mean, I'm pretty sure they will be on the Giants, but we'll see how this uh, unravels throughout the week. Finally, again, some bad news on this game. Uh, the Ravens and the Bengals. Uh, doesn't look like Lamar Jackson's going to play in this game, which is pretty shocking to me. And, and I got to rant for a second about Lamar Jackson, if you don't mind. I keep seeing Pardon. this. You know, that, oh, they're, they're disrespecting Lamar. You know, they signed Roquan Smith, who's been a, the be, one of the best linebackers in football this year since they traded for him. You know, they gave him a five-year, $100 million contract. For the love of God, do you just think that the Ravens have been sitting on their ass and not signing, you know, offering Lamar Jackson contracts? They offered Lamar Jackson a very fair deal, in my opinion. They offered him more money than Russell Wilson. The guarantee was a little less. It was about 135, but the total contract was like $240 million. Mm -hmm. They're not not offering him anything. Right. He just wants a fully guaranteed contract, which is not going to happen. We've only seen that once, and it was a very rare scenario where the Browns were trying to lure a quarterback to choose them. Right. This is not going to happen again. People make it seem like the Ravens are just completely disrespecting him. They offered him a massive contract. And it's not their fault that Lamar and I think his mom represent him, that they don't have real agents um, discussing this contract with the Ravens. This is, please, the Ravens are trying to do right by him. They're trying to do right by the rest of the team. And they're getting killed for it for what? I get it, but I I get both sides. Like I understand you're right about whatever what you just said. You know that they're still off. They obviously are still offering him contracts. Not like they just shut the door on him and told him screw you. But I also don't blame him for now if he's completely healthy and he's just like or you know it's a little st stupid injury, um, and he's just like I'm not gonna play. Obviously that's ridiculous, but it 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 seems like they're really trying to rush him back. This is an injury that his PCL, you know, that anything near the knee is something, especially for a guy like him who relies so much on his legs to make his money. Um, it's not worth taking the risk, uh, especially if you're looking for a long term contract. It's time for you to get paid. So I get his side too. It's just an unfortunate situation the way this has gone on, honestly, and and. And who knows if we've already seen Lamar's last game as a Raven. I, I I still believe that he'll end up the quarterback of this team for the future. Um, I, I just don't see – it might get ugly. You know, he might hold out or whatever's going to happen, you know, a franchise tag, whatever goes on with that. But um, I, I do think that he's going to be the quarterback of the Ravens. I don't know. However many years. The way this thing has gone, I, I, I don't see how he will be. But, you know, maybe the Ravens, you know, I'm going to put this on quotation marks because I already think they did this, but pony up and give them the contract that, you know, makes sense. But we will just have to see. It's, going it's, back to, 
It's smart on his point on his part though, because if the Ravens don't pony up, somebody out there is going to a yes. desperate team like the Jets or whoever else that needs a quarterback will just like the Browns did, will go out and offer up a lot of money. And that and if they if he gets that Lamar uh excuse me, that Deshaun Watson type contract, then that's a mistake on the team's part. Yeah. But that's just my opinion. We don't know how that will go. Um okay. The game. Uh Tyler Huntley's not even practicing. You know, so if this is gonna be another Anthony Brown show, I mean, please. Yeah. Um, but I I, I don't know what's gonna happen here. I, I we can't really talk about the game in the sense of oh, you know, we don't we don't know who's starting. So I, the Bengals are gonna win either way, in my opinion. I yeah. think if Lamar played, it would have been a close game. I think Still the spread Bengals. would have been covered, but the Bengals would have won the game. Um that's just the way I'm I'm going here. I think that's the way you're gonna go too. Mm-hmm. Yep. Bengals all the way. I I I I agree. Obviously the line would change depending on the quarterback, but um when I looked at this game in the beginning of the week, expecting that Lamar was gonna play, um pretty easy decision for me to say that the Bengals are gonna win. They're just yeah. the better team. They got the home field advantage. They're gonna win. All righty, let's um the final game. Some could consider it the game of the week. I've already considered two games the game of the week. The game of Monday night on ESPN. Joe Buck, Troy Aikman, the Dallas Cowboys of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, Tom Brady against Dak Prescott, Tom Brady, 7-0 and in his career against the Dallas Cowboys. Um, let's start with you for this one. Um. Yeah, I mean, this game... Going back to what I said before about the Chargers and the Jaguars, this is the only other game that I was talking about where I think this is the hardest one to predict. Um, it's been a weird season for both of these teams. Obviously, the Bucks got in with a below average, uh, below 500 record. Brady has not had a Brady year. They've been really injured. This offense has looked putrid. Um, the team overall just hasn't looked great. Now, what is the health status of? Jensen and Werfs, are either of them going to be back? I have no clue. Me neither. Um, I understand all the statistics and, you know, that everybody's saying the Cowboys are frauds and they haven't looked great and, you know, you don't bet against Tom Brady in the playoffs, yada, yada, yada. I'm taking the Cowboys to win this game. And I feel like that's an unpopular opinion, even though they're favored, just because everybody I personally talk to, like, of you know friends and family and whoever that cares about this game seems to be on the Buccaneers but um I'm gonna go the other way I think the Cowboys are gonna win this game I do agree I I don't think the Cowboys are um of the same level as the Eagles and the 49ers but I think they're a better football team than the Bucs I could actually see this game getting kind of ugly I know it won't just because Tom Brady and that I'll buy into that. I'm sure it won't get too ugly, but the Cowboys have a tendency to blow out some teams and get on a roll on offense. And I think if the Bucks win, it'll be a really close game. But like I said, I, I'm, I'm feeling good about the Cowboys. I think that their Dak hasn't looked great lately, but I think he has a, a good enough game to win. I'm sure he doesn't win it by himself, but I think the Bucs are going to struggle to score points, to be honest with you. Yeah. Um, the, for me, I, I agree. This is a tough game. Donovan Smith, a little tackle for the Bucks, might play. Um, nothing about Worfs. Worfs, I guess, isn't on the injury report. I don't know. Um, same thing with uh, Houndsley, one of their offensive linemen as well. Listen, I saw a stat today. That's like really freaking me out about the Cowboys on grass compared to them on turf. Oh, um, they're one and four on grass, eleven and one on turf. It's a this is a really tough game to predict, in my opinion. But um, I'll keep this short and simple. I think Dak Prescott's um ability to turn the ball over is something else, and I think he's just going to turn. The, yeah, I think he's going to turn the ball over. I don't think they'll get a running game going on the grass against a good run defense. I'm going to take Tampa Bay in a close, kind of ugly game, you know, probably low scoring. 
Um, kind of the way Tampa has won a lot of their games this year. I think their defense will keep Dallas in check. I just don't trust Dak Prescott. He's I know we've used this term. He's played his worst football at the wrong time. Same thing with this entire Dallas Cowboys team. They just haven't looked great lately. Um, and I don't trust them. And and this is coming from somebody that liked the Cowboys a lot in the beginning and in the middle of the season. I, this was my Super Bowl team in the NFC. Even over the 49ers for a few weeks, I'm completely out on Dallas, um, and I think they lose this game here. You you actually think the grass is, like, going to make a difference? Oh, 100%, yeah. Grass and turf, that's a huge difference. It's Tampa, man. They're not playing in, like, the monsoons. Yeah, they're also not playing in a climate-controlled, you know, stadium with a dome and turf. It's it's different, especially when you're used to it, when you play half your games on it. What were the games they played, like, on – because obviously those are road games that they play it on grass. But that could be a super subjective stat because it could be, like, those teams they played are all great teams. I don't even know who they played that have grass. Let's see. They played the Packers, lost. That's grass. They played the Titans. I think that's grass. They won. Yeah, ugly game. Ugly, they ugly. Played the game. Commanders, grass lost. Uh, who else is grass here? Jacksonville. Eagles lost. Yeah, Jacksonville lost. So that's it. That's the one and four, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, not uh, not on the uh, not buying it on this Dallas Cowboy team at all. Okay. We'll all right, let's um. Let's move on here. Let's uh, go through our bracket and give you a Super Bowl before we wrap this show up. You want to start here? You want to start uh, AFC? Yeah, sure. So, like we were just discussing, we gave all our picks now to just kind of right. group them together. Um, I have the Chargers, Bengals, and Bills advancing on the AFC side. And the NFC side, I have the Cowboys, Giants, and Niners. All right, here we got the Jaguars advancing, the Bengals advancing, and the Bills advancing, and then the Buccaneers advancing, the Giants advancing, and the 49ers advancing. Now to the divisional round, I'll go here. Um, the Bengals will travel to Buffalo and beat them. The three seed beats the two in the AFC, and the Chiefs will take care of business at home against the Jaguars. Oh, in the NFC. The 49ers will beat the Buccaneers, two versus four, and the Giants will lose to the Eagles, but in a close game. This will be a very close, heartbreaking loss for the Giants. All right. Um, Similar, I have the Bengals beating the Bills and then the Chiefs beating the Jaguars instead of, I mean, the uh, Chargers instead of the Jaguars. And then I have the Niners beating the Cowboys and the Eagles beating the Giants. So we have the same championship round i believe right yes and now this afc championship game will be at a neutral site correct no i don't i don't think so no i think that that's over now i don't think neutral site is a possibility anymore oh with the bills out no i think like because they uh, maybe it's the bill oh, no, but... it's definitely no there's definitely I, I think there's a chance i we have to check this Bengals Chiefs game would be at a neutral site. I'm not 100 percent positive, but I have to check that out. So let's go here. I have the Bengals beating the Chiefs, and then I have the San Francisco 49ers beating the Philadelphia Eagles. Okay, so uh Field Yates tweeted note an AFC championship game between the Chiefs and Bengals will be played at a neutral site, but he doesn't mention uh I'm sorry, Chiefs and Bills. He doesn't mention the Bengals though. Okay. So maybe that game is at Arrowhead. Um, yeah. The only way that they're the Bengals and Chiefs would be at a neutral site is if the Bengals were the two seed, but they're not. They're the three. Okay. Um, okay. I have the you said you had the Niners winning? Niners over the Eagles. Okay. I have Bengals over Chiefs and the Eagles over the Niners. All right. So I have Purdy advancing. I think this Jalen Hurts injury, we didn't really talk about um, the Eagles here. I think the Jalen Hurts injury is real. I'm sure he I'm sure he was only like even 75% when he played against the Giants uh, week 18. He did not look good. Um, they obviously weren't going to push him, but still, he just when he was dropping back throwing, he did not look good. 
So I think this is going to be a concern, not playing that much here in the final few weeks, final month of the season. I think it's going to hurt them. I think they'll get by against the Giants just with their ability to run the ball. But I do think that they will end up losing here to the 49ers. And then the Super Bowl, you want to give us your champion. Yeah, Super Bowl. Um, very confident in this team. Um, put a nice little wager on them to win the Super Bowl. I'm gonna pick the Bengals in their second go around um, to win the Super Bowl against the Philadelphia Eagles. All right, and just to be different, um, I will say that the first rookie quarterback wins the Super Bowl ever wow. in NFL history. Uh, this roster is too good. The coaching on this team is too good. Um, I've had money on them to win the Super Bowl all year long, and I think it comes to fruition here. I think they'll beat Cincinnati in a very good Super Bowl. Uh, the, like we said, the defense is great on both sides here. Um, really good defense of Cincinnati and the uh, San Francisco. I'll take San Francisco to win. Need a good Super Bowl. Need a really, yeah. like, we got a little spoiled in that mid-2010s run with, you know, the Seahawks and the Patriots, and you had the <laughs> um, the game that just popped. The Eagles-Patriots game was really good. Yeah. And there's one more that I'm completely forgetting. That was also a very good Super Bowl. One that the Patriots didn't win. I don't know, whatever. It's off the top of my head. I can't think of it right now. But um, need a good Super Bowl here. Last year's was – it was good. It was. It definitely wasn't a bad game. It was good. Yeah. I don't know. I don't. I don't really. Honestly, I don't remember it that much. I feel like I like every year. I don't remember that much from the game and the Super Bowl just because of all the other stuff that's surrounding it. That yeah. You forget you're watching a football game, which we've talked about this. That I actually it's... am not the biggest fan of the Super Bowl. Right. This is the best weekend right here that we have coming up. I'm pretty excited for it. And oh, um... Patriots Falcons. That was the one that I was forgetting. Oh, the Patriots won that. Yeah, which I hated that, but it was. Well, still... you. Threw me off. I, I was going to say Patriots foul because then you said the Patriots didn't win. I know. I don't know why I said that. But Good job, though. Uh, yeah, so I'm excited for this weekend. I'm excited for this postseason. I'm nervous for the uh, the Giants game, but I think it'll uh, – I think we'll be good. It's good to have those nerves, man. It's good to be I nervous know. about football in January. No, I'm – listen, I'm pumped. I'm nervous, but I'm pumped. And I, I think the one of the reasons why I'm nervous is because I think the Giants have a chance. Right. You know, if they were playing San Francisco, I'd be like – all right, you know what? It was a great season. They win, you know, they if they win, holy crap. If they play a good game, you know, again, a round of applause, but right. you, know, you ran into the better team. I think the Giants are evenly matched here. And right. I really think they have a chance. Because they'd be playing, you know, if they're playing San Francisco, they're playing with nothing to lose, basically. Right. Um, I think they have something to you lose. No, you're the lesser team, but the, the Vikings, there's a little expectations there for the Giants. Yeah, and that it was a tough loss a few weeks back, and I think they're going to want to avenge this loss. All right. That's it for episode 84. Got it right. Start of the episode. Got it wrong. Now I got it right. Check out all of our pages, TikTok, Instagram, um, YouTube. We're going to have a list post. We're about to record that, a uh, top 10 first baseman. So go check that out. Anything you got to say? Um, No, be- gamble uh, safely this weekend. Yes, responsibly. Yeah. Have, have a fantastic Super Wild Card weekend.